The Prime Minister admits that he'd love to see former Bank of Canada Governor Mark Carney enter politics, but not necessarily at the expense of his current finance minister, Christian Freeland. Listen to this. I have been talking with Mark Carney for years now about getting him to join federal politics. I think he would be uh, an outstanding addition at a time when uh, Canadians need good people to step up in politics. In regards to Christia, she has been a close friend and ally and partner in doing really big things for Canada and will continue to be. I have full confidence uh, in her abilities and on the work we're going to be doing together. So you may wonder why the Prime Minister is talking about that at NATO. That's because questions are being raised after both the Toronto Star and the Globe and Mail said at unnamed sources saying the Prime Minister may be considering or trying to bring Mark Carney into Cabinet to re replace Freeland as Finance Minister. And there's also some leaks to the Globe and Mail and others saying that the Prime Minister's senior staff, they're not comfortable with Christian Freeland's performance in that department, especially when it comes to communication. So what do we make of these leaks to the press, Carlene? Um, Four years ago, we started to see stories like this in the Globe and Mail about Bill Morneau, and with a week or so, Bill Morneau was off to run the OECD. That job isn't open for another couple of years, so what do we make of the timing of this stuff about Christian Freeland? I think we can talk a lot about um, the workhorse that Krista Freeland has been for this government since November 4th, 2015, and, and, and I hope we will get a chance to, to, to talk about that because she certainly has a, a record of competently executing every portfolio she's been handled. But I think the more interesting story here is... Uh, what whomever orchestrated these leaks um, thought that they were going to accomplish. You know, um, in, in politics, any day that you have your party's caucus, your cabinet, your army of Parliament Hill staffers and your, your broader membership uh, distracted and, and, and preoccupied with these palace intrigue stories mm. is a day that you are not focused on connecting with Canadians, climbing, crawling out of that 20-point polling hole that you find yourself in. And every day that a story like this is the top story in politics is a great day for the Conservative Party. So um, I, I don't presume to know all of the background that ultimately led to these right. stories, but I, I certainly don't think that it's a, a wise or smart way to um, to, to, to protect the, the Liberal Party's interests in the long term. Yeah, and, Andrew, there has been a lot of... Uh complaining and grumbling in liberal circles for years about not getting enough lift out of their budget and the comms around how their economic message isn't connecting. And there's been a lot of grumbling and venting since the St. Paul's by-election. I've not heard anyone say Christian Freeland is the reason for any of these things. You know, they all realize there's a constellation of issues they're running into. But she's getting singled out and targeted here. And the Mark Kearney um, angle to this doesn't make a lot of sense with him not running and there's no... Senate Liberals anymore. I, I mean, what, what do you make of all these pieces as a former finance minister yourself? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I'd say is that, you know, it, the only position for Carney in the new cabinet is as a finance minister. And you can be certain that one of the conversations he's been having with the prime minister has been about what the direction of the budget is going to be. I can't imagine Mark Carney coming in and signing on to the budget as it currently exists. And I think right. that's one of the big reasons he doesn't want to do it. Uh, and I don't see the prime minister ever agreeing to actually change direction from the, you know, the path that he's laid out. This set of leaks sounds to me like the kind of thing that a leader does when they want to distract from their own problems and point over to, you know, look at us over here. We've got this interesting candidate that wants to come in. Maybe it disrupts my cabinet. I'm the guy still in charge. I'm the guy that makes, makes those, gets to make those decisions. This sounds to me like, uh, you know, a very typical kind of play out of the playbook to shift the, um, shift the attention away from the failings of the current leader to uh, you know, offer some hope to the party that maybe there's a path forward that doesn't require him needing to leave. James, what do you make of it? I, I mean, I know the Liberals are kind of looking at everything, and there's a lot of like you know throwing spaghetti at the walls and, and figure out what kind of a plan could be there. But you know, I, I don't know if anyone believes move Christian Freeland and everything's fine. This is what the end of a government feels like when governments end. It's almost never dignified in a glide path down to some uh, glorious exit of. Uh, rounds of applause and balloon drops from a ballroom in a hotel of people saying thank you for the great work that you did. It's often ugly like this and it's in, and indignified. Setting aside whatever one thinks about Minister Freeland as a politician and what her political priorities have been and her policy views, setting that aside, Christina Freeland is someone who has fought side by side with Justin Trudeau mm -hmm. through three election campaigns, through blackface, delivered budgets, uh, took on the task of the NAFTA renegotiations on behalf of Canadians and assembled the team and, and all those things. 
Um, she is owed better dignity than this. What's happening and what's being rumored about her, this isn't just today. Today it's, it happens to be on the front page of the Globe. It's been going on for a few weeks. Were I Minister Freeland, what I would ask of the Prime Minister is better than what he offered today at that press conference. I would ask the Prime Minister and I would say, look, I think with respect, Prime Minister, you owe me better than this. I've been your finance minister. I've been nothing but a loyal soldier. I think you owe me a clear public declaration of your confidence in my position as not as a member of the team, quote, quote, but as your finance minister and deputy prime minister, anything less than that hmm. is less than what I think I deserve from you. And then and then if Justin Trudeau then goes ahead and does that, she should say thank you very much and she should quit the next day and walk into the sunset. That's what I would do if I were her. She deserves better than this. The indignity that she's been shown will not go away and she should... Hmm punch back and that's how she should punch back. So, so I have a question uh, on that because I had heard people, you know, blue skying on the idea that maybe she does move to a new role, but it's kind of the old role of dealing with Donald Trump in the United States, depending on how the election goes, still be the deputy prime minister, but more of going back to the front lines of that fight. I mean, can you even make a move like that now with these sort of leaks? It's either she has to leave or she's invulnerable or he's got to fire someone in his office for leaking this, doesn't he? Well, look, the, the government is ending in 12 to 18 months. It's over. Mm -hmm. And she is being thrown under the bus here, uh, in my view, in a desperate attempt to try and change the subject, as was just described, to bring in Mark Carney, who has not publicly said anything about this. This is a scramble. And there's a reason why Jane Philpott and Jody Wilson-Raybould and Mark Garneau last week and Bill Morneau has a book and Jody Wilson-Raybould has a book and Scott Bryson, the, the, the uh, army of former cabinet ministers who have come out and publicly talked about the indignity and the unprofessionalism and the lack of class that Justin Trudeau has shown his own cabinet ministers is more than any group of cabinet ministers ministers that I've seen of any government, federal or provincial, in, in recent memory. Um, it's it's awful. And she deserves better than this. And she should stake her claim and, and push back. OK, well, well just so, so people know, we've asked uh, Christian Freeland's office for comment on this today. They referred us to the prime minister who made the statement he made at NATO. Carlene, what, what's the reaction in this in liberal world? What, what are you hearing there? It, it's been very strong from what I've seen. Um, I, I think that there's been, I've, I've observed significant backlash to what's implied in those stories. Um, mm -hmm. I think most liberal partisans here in Ottawa and across, right, right across the country um, sort of a, took a step back at that for some of the reasons you cited. You know, it, this this is sort of a new angle. Like, wait, wait a second, what, what, which part of the problem was she? Um, and, and people immediately think to the way that she sort of carried the NAFTA renegotiations on her back, the way that she has carried water for the prime minister, frankly, on every major issue that he's um, had to confront over the course of this government. I am still, uh, look, this, this is not necessarily a government that has always excelled at um, being able to immediately nip something in the bud when something goes awry. No. I'm still willing to give it about 24 hours. I think there's a chance that the prime minister and, and, and those advising him kind of recognize when they finish with the NATO summit today, you know, the answer I gave today was not unequivocal enough. And thus the story is continuing. I, I'm, I'm still willing to consider that there's a possibility that tomorrow he comes out and says more explicitly, and, and he mm. ought to, I have full confidence in Christopher Freeland as my finance minister, and she will continue in that role. Do people buy the Kearney stuff? Like, uh, he, there have been opportunities for him to run, and he hasn't run, and the prime minister has made it clear he's been trying to get him to run. LaSalle is coming up if he wants to run in Montreal. Mm -hmm. But, like, he, you can't do the put him in the Senate and put him in the cabinet thing because there's no more liberal senators. And I don't know if he'd want to hold the pan of a budget that the NDP has a role in because of the supply and confidence agreement. I mean, are people buying this? Well, I mean, two things. Um, Wimbledon's going on right now. Yesterday, who was yeah. in the royal box right. along with Queen Camilla? Mark Carney. Um, right. Doesn't seem like he's in a particularly... It sounds better than running in a summer by-election well, in Montreal, yeah. Exactly. Politics <laughs> is not exactly a, a glamorous calling these days. Um, but on a more serious note, if Mark Carney has political ambitions, I mean, mm. he's certainly a very accomplished person, and it would it would be make sense that he would see this as perhaps the next stepping stone in his career, uh, it would be far wiser for him not to associate himself with uh, the Trudeau government thus far. You know, get that... that, that stink that baggage on you. Um, it would be far wiser for him to wait in the wings until the leadership position is available and then come right. in as the change candidate. So no, I see zero reason why he would take this position. Andrew, I saw you close your eyes and nod sagely as Carlene <laughs> made that point. Uh, you, you agree with her that, because uh, this, this is two reports now in the Toronto Star and the Globe and Mail saying they're, they're looking at Kearney as a replacement and no sign of its being solid, you know, in terms of coming to life. I mean, I understand what the advantage is for the Liberals, and I see what the advantage is for the Prime Minister. 
having a, you know, a, a brand new finance minister to be able to point to and a little bit of excitement for the Liberal Party. I just don't get what's in it for Mark Carney. Yeah. Having to uh, deal with a by-election, potentially having to go and uh, you know, deal with uh, you know, the mess that is kind of uncoupling the, uh, the supply and confidence agreement, figuring out a new direction on the budget. I just don't see what, what he gets out of it. And as Carlin says, he's got all the accolades in the world that he's ever needed. Being finance minister of Canada isn't really that big of a, uh, an added uh, trophy on his, uh, on his bookshelf. Right, but he has declared his partisanship, and he has declared an interest, and uh, who knows uh, when he'll actually declare a, a candidacy. Um, he's got time. We're out of time. I want to thank the Power Panel. James Moore, Andrew Thompson, Carleen Varan, thanks so much for being with me here today and this hour.